Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial series. So far in this series, we've built our own CRM application, complete with a backend. We have a dashboard view showing stats over contacts, and we have a CRUD view where we can both list and edit and uh, delete contacts. So our application itself is complete, but what we're missing still is a way to authenticate users and only let those users who are actually allowed to use the system get in. So in this video, we're going to add a login screen to the application and configure Spring Security to actually perform the authentication. Let's get started. Again, I want to remind you that there is a text version of this tutorial up on vaadin.com and a link to that in the show notes. So if you want to copy paste any of the code that you see me typing, or if you want to download the sources for the step that I'm starting from right now, you can find all of that in the text version. The first thing that we're going to do is actually define the login screen. So in our views package here, let's create a new sub package login. And inside of login, we'll create a new Java class called login view. We will extend vertical layout for the login view, the same as we have for the other views. We'll map this to a route. So we'll map this to the login path. And we'll give this a page title, the same as we have for the other view. So we'll have here login like this. All right, so let's create a constructor here. I'm going to use the Vaadin login form component to actually build out the form. So that's going to save us from having to actually create the form itself. So let's define a login form, login, and it'll be equal to a new login form, like so. And in the constructor, what I want to do is first of all, add a class name like we have for the other view. So we'll call this login view. Then we're going to make it full size. So set size full. Then I want the login form that I add to be centered on the screen. So we can set uh, the justify content mode. So alignment along the main axis, in this case, the vertical axis to center. And also we'll set the alignment to center to center it in both directions. With that, let's go ahead and call add to add the components to the layout. And I'm going to add two components. First of all, a header. So we'll, so people know what system they're logging into. And then the login form. For the login form, we need to tell it what should happen when we actually submit the login. So we're going to set the action to be equal to the string login. What this means is that it will post the login to the path login. And that's what we're going to set up in Spring Security in just a moment. Okay, so one more thing we need to cover here in the login view is if Spring Security returns an error, it's going to return us back to this login screen and give us a query parameter notifying that there is an error. So we want to capture that login uh, or that query parameter and show it. We can do that by implementing a before enter observer. And this will require us to implement the method. In this method, I want to check if there's a error query parameter present. So I'll start with an if. And if not, well, then we'll start with the event. So we get the event from it, we'll get the location. Then from there, we'll get the query parameters. And from there, the actual parameters. Then we need to call get or default. So if the parameter is not present, we want to define what we'll get. So the one we're interested in is error. And then the default value will be collections.emptyList. So we'll return an empty list if, uh, if we don't have any. And then we'll call is empty as the check here. So quite a mouthful. Uh, but essentially, what we're doing is checking whether or not we have a parameter error here. If there is, then we'll take our login screen and we'll set the error to visible like so. 
Okay, so go ahead and build, or if you don't have the server up and running from before, go ahead and start the project. And you'll see that the browser refreshes and you should be able to manually go to the login screen. Now I've logged in before as I've been working on this, so it's suggesting the username and password already, but for you, it won't do that. Okay, so just having a login screen in and of itself doesn't make our app any more secure, especially if people explicitly have to navigate to it. So the next thing we need to do is configure Spring Security to actually perform the authentication and redirecting any unauthorized access to the login screen so people can authenticate themselves. So for that, we'll need to start by adding a couple of dependencies into the POM file. So I will add two dependencies, Spring Security Web and Spring Security Config. Now my IntelliJ is set up for automatic import of these dependencies, like I showed you in the earlier video. If you're unsure if you have that or just want to make sure, you can run the install command in Maven just to make sure that they get downloaded. Okay, once you have those, go to the application class and here we need to exclude one class. So we'll need to exclude the error MBC auto configuration class. There is a small clash with uh, VOD in here. There's no open bug about that, but it essentially leads to a reload cycle that's not ideal for what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, so let's go and create a new package here in the CRM package. So we'll create a package called security to keep things nice and organized. And in here, we need a couple of classes where we set up Spring Security and hook it up to Vaadin. So we'll start with a utility class called Security Utils. And again, reminding you that you can find all of this code in the text version, so you don't need to type it. You can, you can find it all there. It's probably easier to, to copy paste it. In that interest, I have some pre-baked code here that I'll, I'll use and we'll just walk through what we're doing. So this is a utility class. It just, it has two static methods that we can call. The first one is to identify whether or not a given HTTP request is internal to the Vaadin framework or not. We'll need that in a little while because uh, we want those to always be able to, to get through. The second one is a method for checking whether or not we have a logged in user at the moment. The second class that we're going to create is a custom request cache. So we'll call it custom request cache. What this cache does is it keeps track of the URL people were trying to access if they were not authenticated. So if you tried to access the dashboard URL while you were unauthenticated, you'd get sent over to the login screen. And then as you log in, you'd get uh, redirected back to where you were trying to go. Then we get to the meat of it all. So we need to configure Spring Security itself. I'm going to call this class Security Configuration. And this is going to be a fairly long class, but we'll walk through it and see what's going on. So first of all, we have a class that extends from Web Security Configure Adapter. That's a class from Spring. We annotate this with Enable Web Security. This will tell Spring Boot that we want to use Spring Security and that it should enable everything that's needed to do that. We also annotate it with this configuration annotation, which uh, makes this class the kind of configuration for that Spring Security setup. The beginning here, we define some URLs. So the URL for the login, what should be the URL if there's an error? You remember we caught this error quer uh, query parameter in the login view. And finally, where people should be logged in or sent after they've logged out. The first thing we configure is the HTTP security. We start by disabling Spring Boot's cross-site request forgery because Vaadin comes with a built-in request uh, cross-site request forgery support, and we don't want to have double that. Then we register the custom request cache that we just created. We 
restrict the access to our application to an authorized request. We use the security utilities method uh, is framework internal request to allow Vaadin internal requests and state that any other request should be logged in. We then set up the login form saying what the login URL should be and that everyone should be permitted to access the login page. And we say that the login processing URL where we post the login should be this URL. And on failure, we should be re uh, redirected to this login failure URL. Finally, we say that when people log out, they should be redirected to the logout success URL. The next thing that we configure is the user detail service. Uh, this is essentially defining the users of our system. Now in this simple tutorial application, we're using an in-memory details manager. It's uh, okay for a demo like this, but this is the kind of one part of this tutorial series where you would have to go and change this out to something more uh, appropriate for production. I will add links to some further reading in the text version of this tutorial where you can go and see how to hook this up to your LDAP or any kind of other uh, authentication source. Uh, the good thing with a Spring Boot project is that this is fairly straightforward to do, swapping this mock data source to something more uh, realistic. In this case, we only create one user with the username user, a password of password with the user role, and then we have store that in memory. Then finally, we configure access to static resources. Again, we're allowing access to Vaadin internal resources, the fav icon, robots.txt, the web app manifest, service worker, and an offline page that we'll use in the next tutorial to make our app offline. We're gonna add uh, exclusions for icons and images. I'm actually gonna extend this a little bit and add tiles here. So we'll also wanna add, allow people access to styles, especially when we're doing this offline stuff, we'll want to have access to those. Uh, then finally, we wanna make sure that we have access to the front end assets, which are the front end dependencies of a Vaadin application and access to the H2 console uh, if you're using that during development time. Finally, we have the static resources that Vaadin uses during production. Then the last piece of configuration is to hook up string security with Vaadin. So we're gonna create a new class here and I'm gonna call this configure UI service init listener. And in this class, let me just get this in here. So here, let's first of all, let's fix this missing import. All right, and so what we have here is a class that implements the Vaadin service init listener. So whenever Vaadin gets started, this will get run. And what we want to do here is add a global listener for any page transition and add a listener that gets run before that happens so that we can intercept those. The reason we're doing this is that Spring Security by itself is not equipped to handle single page applications like the one we're building with Vaadin. It's based on a kind of page architecture where every single page has a different URL and a, essentially an HTML page that matches that. Since everything technically in a Vaadin application uses the same URL, uh, we need to handle that ourselves. And what we do here in the listener is that we allow access to the login view. And in all other cases, if somebody's not logged in, so we're using the is user logged in utility method here, we reroute them to the login view class. So we only allow unauthorized access to the login view where people can log in. Now, since we added new dependencies in our POM file, we need to shut down our server and start it up again to make sure that those get picked up. Okay, and once this is up and running, go to our application and you'll notice that we now get the login screen automatically even without uh, manually typing in login here. We should be able to 
use the user password combo to log in. I'll save this for future. And you can see now we can use the application as authenticated users. The final thing I want to add here is a way to log out. So let's add a little logout link up here. This will be in main layout and here in the header. So I will create a new anchor for it, an anchor, essentially an HTML anchor, just a plain link to the logout URL. I'll give it a text log out so people know what it does. We'll extract this to a variable and add it to our layout like that. Finally, we're going to call header dot expand on the logo, essentially by expanding the layout slot for this logo here, it will push the link all the way to the right, so that it's kind of separated from the rest and kind of where people might expect to find a, a logout link. So we'll press build here. And go back to our browser. Again, we'll log in. We can now see the logout URL or link up here, and we can log out. Okay, so that's it. We've taken our CRM application and we've secured it with Spring Security. We've added a login screen and a logout button so people can both log in and log out. In the next video, we're going to take our application and turn it into a progressive web application so that people can install it on their desktop or on their mobile phone and define a custom offline fallback page so that they get a nice, consistent experience, whether or not they're offline or online. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so that you get notified whenever we post that video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.